Love for the Blood God, Skulls for the Skull Throne. We have a World Eaters army that even Mini Wargaming Dave would be jealous of. This army has been painted by Billy from our Warrior Workshop team and involves a whole host of models, including loads of Berserkers, a Lord in Bacatus, a Lord on Juggernaut, a Master of Executions, some Jackals, some Exalted Eight Bound, some Eight Bound, some Chaos Spawn, some Rhinos, a Land Raider, a Demon Prince with Wings, and to lead them all, the mighty Angron Primarch of the World Eaters. So Warrior Workshop is our tabletop alternative level here at Siege Studios and involves a more airbrushed stylistic execution and less edge highlighting. Let's jump in and have a look at the Land Raider from the project. As you can see, this Land Raider has loads of trophy racks uh, dedicating the vehicle thoroughly to corn with all those skulls and even an Ultramarine's helmet on there as well. Uh, you can see on the execution of the paint job, you can see the lovely tonal gradient that's all over the model, uh, sort of adding that lighting effect onto the miniature uh, with upper edge highlights on the raised areas as well. Uh, Billy's done a great job of sectioning off the model and doing a really smooth transition on the armored panels and all the different facets of that armored surface on the Land Raider. Uh, you can see all the skulls and everything fully painted, um, even the little sort of parts here at the bottom where all the running wheels of the tracks would be are all painted in brass as well, which is a really nice little sort of nod of detail. Uh, all the lenses on the tank are fully painted and the lights uh, you can see here on the front of it, which is just great. Um, I love the subtle muzzle burn effect on these LAS cannons. It's a really, really lovely sort of heat bloom kind of like damage, heat damage effect on the LAS cannons. Shows that they've been firing for many, many thousands of years. Uh, which is just great. Um, I do also really like that some of the gun cowlings are done in black as well, just to add that sort of darker color onto the overall palette of the miniature, which I think is great. And that kind of nods quite nicely with the rest of the weapons, like the auxiliary weapons, like the Havoc launcher here on the top, and also the, the Pintle mounted Storm Bolter. Um, but yeah, really nicely uh, added details, like for example, the corn symbol on the on the front uh, hatch there, as it as it opens, you see that corn symbol just on that top plate. And again, you've got some of the uh, some of the other sort of chaos details, like the eight pointed star just on this top hatch here. Um, I do really like that the missiles have been picked out in the Havoc launcher as well, just so those little details are all fully painted. And the use of green on the like the uh, cupular lenses as well, just here on the front, you've got a nice green accent here and also on the rear one, uh, just that splash of green to sort of contrast nicely against the reds uh, on the miniature. Uh, but that's the Land Raider from the army. You couldn't have a Marine force without the iconic Land Raider albeit that it's fallen to Corn and the Dark Gods. So that's the Land Raider from this army. Such an iconic vehicle and great to have it in this force. Next, let's have a look at the Rhinos, another infamous vehicle from the Marine faction. Uh, let's jump in and have a look at that. So the same attention to detail on all the little individual parts of the miniature, the trophy racks, the little skulls, the, some of the helmets on there. Obviously, there's a lot of Ultramarines that unfortunately have become victim to this army, and you'll see that through the video. Uh, but again, Billy's done a great job of adding that subtle transition on the sort of armoured areas of the Rhino. You can see that lovely high contrast sort of steel metal work to this kind of armour. Uh, all the individual details with the brass areas are, really stand out brightly on the miniature, which is just great. Again, you can see no expense spare when it comes to lenses and details, all the missiles in the uh, Havoc launcher, the lights on the front, the little auxiliary lights next to it, uh, they've all been done. And you can see also the, uh, again, that splash of green just on the cupola of the tank, uh, those lenses around there are just really, really nicely done. Um, again, with the edge highlighting on this, you've got really refined highlighting across all the upper areas just to show where light would catch. Uh, if we move the model around here, you'll also see on the back of it, you can see obviously that those corn symbols have been added to the miniature just to show the devotion to the uh, the, the god of uh, god of blood. And as you can see on all models in this army, in this showcase, they've got this lovely red airbrush gradient that's been done on the model from a light to a mid to a dark, which is the signature stylistic execution of the Warrior Workshop level here at Siege Studios. And that's one of the rhinos from this force. So next, let's have a look at the Chaos Spawn in this army, a really iconic miniature that's been around for a long time, but you couldn't have a Chaos Army without some spawn. And these ones have got a little bit of a corn flavor on them, which I do really, really like. So let's have a look at them. So this spawn has got the same subtle red airbrush transition from light above all the way through a darker tone at the bottom, which is just great. Um, one of the things I do really like is it has got that cornate headdress, which just gives that flavor of uh, the blood god on the miniature. Do really like that. Obviously wielding some form of hatchet on one of those arms as well. You've got those wibbly tentacles as well. Uh, and one of my favorite things is the actual, the, like the eyes that are on the back. So it's got like an eye growing out the back of the model, which is 
Really cool, it's something a little bit different um, and just uh, just really evident on there as we move the model around, you'll see that eye just on the back of it, which is great. Um, but all the brass work done with a really high sort of contrast highlight stage on the upper facets as well, which is just really nice. And I love the way that the tentacle goes from like that rich bright red at the top through to a darker desaturated red and then kind of transitions to a black as well. Something a little bit different, gives it a very menacing evil kind of look, which is just great. Uh, and that's one of these awesome spore models that are in the army. So next, let's have a look at the Jackals, another infantry unit from this force. And again, there's a lot of them in the army. So let's pull a few of these forward to have a look at. Really ferocious, dual chainsword wielding maniac, which is uh, his other name, but um, a really great miniature. Uh, and Billy's done a great job here with the skin tone and just adding a lot of variance of tone on there. And again, that airbrush gradient that's been done on the model. Um, got all the refined little details. So obviously these models have got quite a considerable amount of detail on them with all the spikes, the armor plating, the skulls, the leather. You've obviously got the weaponry as well. Um, but really cleanly painted with every aspect of detail, still painted to a super high standard, uh, makes a really striking unit when all together and individually each one still looks great. Uh, and that's one of the really good things about what you get with Warrior from us here at Siege Studios. Uh, but again, another crazy maniac to, to charge forward in the name of the Blood God. Let's have a look at another model from the unit. Clad with loads of muscle and weaponry to tout as well, we've got this awesome hulking Dishonored Warrior. Uh, and Billy's done a great job on the skin tone and adding a nice variance of tone on that flesh. Uh, you can see those cables that go from the uh, the blood uh, tanks at his back into his head as well, which is uh, really, really interesting. Uh, you've got this amazing kind of like uh, almost orb-like mace uh, that's chained to his arm as well. I think that's skulls inside it as well, so that's a really gruesome detail there. Uh, you can see obviously you've got nice colours on the, like the trousers and obviously the armoured, really high contrast detail work and painting that's been done on this miniature, even at a warrior level. Uh, if we move around the back, you'll see the uh, really nice kind of like mauve kind of like burgundy cloth work as well, which is a really nice detail uh, and just adds a bit of warmth to the model as well. But you can see those blood tanks on the back as well. They're filled with blood sloshing around as he charges forward um, but that's just the massive hulking dishonored model from the jackals so next in the army let's have a look at one of the characters uh, keeping everyone in check and executing anyone that doesn't do their devotion to the dark gods we have the master of executions a really really gruesome looking miniature uh, which has got loads of awesome weapons mainly a giant massive axe uh, which is used undoubtedly to execute not only the foes of the Emperor, but also anyone that doesn't pull their weight and claim enough skulls. Um, clad here, obviously, with lots of bone work on the shoulder, on the pauldron. Uh, you've got skulls on the trophy rack and another fallen ultramarine, unfortunately, ultramarine fans. Um, but as we move around here, you can see, again, really, really clean execution. Everything's fully painted and highlighted as well, which is really nice. We've got a lovely transition, subtle transition on the cloth work as well, so it gets a little bit darker and brighter in places, which is good. All the stitching work done on there, those different air aspects of leather or skin has been added on there, which just really ties all of that together, to use a pun. Uh, and we've got a really great, vibrant kind of wrap around the axe as well, which just, again, adds a little bit of brightness to the miniature. Obviously, it's quite a darker model, having obviously all the black armour, plus also kind of like the darker bone work and things. Uh, and we've got these emaciated heads that he's holding from his hand as well, just that flesh Really nice desaturated sort of uh, dying flesh on there, which is just great. Um, and again, really awesome and menacing character model to have in the uh, World Eaters army. Uh, and that's the Master of Executions. Joining the Master of Executions in the butchering of the foes of the Emperor, we have a vast swathe of exalted eight bound and also general eight bound. So I'm gonna pull a few of them forward so you can have a look at the variants of models, uh, but these are absolutely savage. Let's have a look at one of the models. Super, super aggressive and menacing. Uh, we've got all the details on the miniature fully painted, as you can see. Nice variants on the armor. So we've got lighter parts and darker parts and that, that airbrush transition that's been done on there before everything's been painted. Also got all the block blocking in has been done really well as well. So things are sectioned in really nice colors just to obviously distinguish them on the model, make the model really readable, which is great. Uh, all the faces and things have all been fully painted as well. So you can see the nice attention to detail that's been placed on those. Um, I do like all the edging that's been done on the upper areas and the high contrast to the flesh uh, and the armor. So you've got that really nice, rich, red, uh, warm and darker areas that are on there. And then you've got a high contrast sort of desaturated uh, flesh as well, just to really add a lot of interest to the miniature. Um, you can see all the brass, all the trim that obviously Chaos models are infamous for has all been done in a really nice sort of brass color with a subtle highlighting done on the upper areas as well, which is just great. Uh, and that's one of these awesome eight bound miniatures uh, from the force. 
wielding a giant chain sword and also a chain axe. We've got another one of the eight bound here. And I wanted to pull a secondary one forward just so you can have a look at another one from the army. You can see all the faces and details fully painted. We've got the World Eaters Legion symbol there just on that shoulder pad uh, with those really awesome bright silver painted teeth on there. Sort of those there sort of eating that planet. Um, and then if you go around, you can see again, you've got the lovely tonal variants that's been done on the armor, some catch points edging done on sort of the upper areas of the model and the armored areas as well, which is just really nice. Uh, all the steel and sort of iron that's been done on the model as well, fully highlighted. Uh, with a nice stage of highlight on the upper areas just to catch those uh, raised surfaces. Uh, but that's another one of the awesome eight bound miniatures uh, from the force. So charging forward in front of that vast swathe of infantry, we've got the Lord on Juggernaut, a really infamous model, uh, which I do absolutely love. I remember Juggernauts from back in the day when they were a metal kit, and it's so good to see them again in 40K. I know they've been around in Age of Sigma for some time, but having a Chaos Space Marine on top of a Juggernaut charging forward, I think that's you can't get anything more chaotic and 40K than that. Um, here we have this really nicely painted uh, Lord on Juggernaut. I really love the, the, the difference in sort of tone between the Juggernaut and also the Lord on the back of it. So you've got obviously more of a ready hue on that Lord, and then you've got more of a kind of like a burgundy on the actual juggernaut for its armored areas but again the same consistency and attention to detail with that lovely subtle transition on the actual armored areas both on the marine and also on the juggernaut uh, all the uh, trim and chaos symbols have all been fully painted and a nice subtlety of verdigris that's been done on some of the rivets and things on that brass areas just to add that interest and uh, a little bit of a cooler color on there as well which is great um, you can see the for the lord all of his details are fully painted and I do like the use of the uh, the sort of airbrush transition even there on that head crest you can see that goes brighter at the top and it's darker at the bottom uh, but again really nice controlled execution just to give a real subtlety of vibrancy from the model from the top to the middle to the bottom uh, but all the lenses on the model so his, his eye lens is painted in that green as well nice contrast color there just to really make sure the eyes are visible and even with catch lights at the back of the lenses as well uh, that's one of my favorite things when it comes to painting miniatures and marines is adding those little catch lights and splashes of sort of like detail um, but this lord of on juggernaut is ready to tear the face off of anyone in front of him and uh, to lead the army with his fellow characters so charging alongside the lord on juggernaut we have the lord invocatus uh, again an awesome awesome miniature on top of a really evil looking juggernaut one of my favorite things about this miniature is the glowing runes that are actually on the uh, juggernaut but he's done a great job of adding like a subtlety to the glow effect that's on the model um, and what that does is it really really adds a bit of life and a bit of like a chaos kind of vibe to the miniature uh, shows that this model perhaps is a little bit more inspired or has a bit more of the eye of the gods which i do really really like Really great color contrast with that sort of reddy orange to that black armor, like that sort of blue black armor that the Juggernaut has got. Um, again, you can see the subtle gradation of airbrush uh, usage on there just to add that sort of transition, which is nice. Again, high contrast to the Lord Invocatus to the Juggernaut. He's in obviously the classic brass and crimson armor of the World Eaters. Uh, but then you've got that sort of dark juggernaut, which I just think makes the model look really, really nice. Uh, you can see all the metal work fully painted really cleanly and also brightly as well. So you've got that high contrast to the darker colors that are on there. Um, and again, I do love the use of the airbrush on here just to add that subtle transition from light mid to dark on the models. Uh, but again, really aggressive, evil looking character and probably one of my favorite models from the Corn or World Eaters faction. So where better to go after the Lord Invocatus than have a look at what I would consider as the backbone of any World Eaters army, which is the faithful, devoted Corn Berserker. And this army does not disappoint as we've got quite a few of them in here. So let's pull one forward and have a look at the Berserkers. This champion is wielding a plasma pistol with a really great green high contrast glow effect on that plasma. And uh, you can see it radiating down on the hand a little bit. So it's got a bit of a glow effect on the arm as well, which I think works really nicely. Wielding the, the iconic chain axe, which is the uh, the faithful weapon of the Corn Berserker. Um, do really like what Billy's done with this uh, in a sense of the colors, obviously a slightly darker crimson. So uh, a little bit darker than what you would normally see, which I think is a really great choice by our client and just adds that really kind of like aggressive look to the miniature being in sort of a darker kind of like a uh, color scheme. Uh, but that's the champion here. You can see the trophy rack with loads of skulls on it as well, as you'd expect on any corn miniature um, but really nicely painted that the brass painted really brightly as well just a contrast of darker armor color which i think works really well uh, and again this champion is ready to lead his unit of berserkers to rip and tear his foes apart
As there are so many Berserkers, let's have a look at some more. And probably one of my next favorite miniatures from this force is one of the Berserkers that's wielding an Eviscerator. So I've always thought that Berserkers should have a giant chain axe. And this model does not disappoint. Uh, charging forward in probably one of the most aggressive poses, I think, in the Corn Berserker box, we have this guy wielding a double-handed giant Eviscerator, uh, which you would not want to be on the receiving end of. But as you can see, as I rotate the model, Every little bit of detail on the Corn Berserker is painted to a really high standard. You've got every bit of armor paneling with a lovely subtle transition on there. All the brass work really bright. Uh, and again, that white kind of wrap around the, uh, the grip on the chain axe or the eviscerator uh, just adds a little brighter color on there and just distinguishes the, the chain axe a little bit better, which I think is great. Um, again, I do like the fact that all the leather across the force has been done in black. Again, so you've got that high contrast kind of on the gun pouches and any sort of like sashes or cloth work has all been done in black. Uh, and then you've got splashes of silver, as you can see, on the exhaust ports from the power pack as well. Uh, but that's just one of the uh, Berserkers with an Eviscerator from the army. Moving on from the Berserkers, we have the, one of the last two characters to look at. And I'm going to save the best till last. We're going to save the main man till last. But let's have a look at the Demon Prince from the army. Um, I love what Billy's done here on the uh, sort of wings with that sort of brighter red on the sort of sinew and skin in between, obviously, the more sort of bony parts of the wings. I think that works really well uh, and just adds a very menacing backdrop to a quite a high contrast miniature in that total brazen kind of like brass armor, which is just really great. Um, wielding the warp bolter, obviously, on one arm, really iconic old bit of kit that I love uh, that's been put onto this new plastic demon prince. Um, and then, as I mentioned, obviously, with a giant axe in the right hand. Uh, really, really great sort of use of colors to distinguish the, the blade and also it's kind of like the other parts of the axe which hold that blade in place. Um, again, really, really nicely executed. You've got a great sort of airbrush transition there on the flesh and also on the, the brass as well, just subtlety, just adding some brighter points. A little bit of verdigris that's been added onto the model. Um, and I will rotate the model around the back just so you can have a look at these beautiful wings uh, that are just at the back of the miniature here with that lovely red uh, in between all the bony crests, which is just great. Um, but again, executed really, really cleanly. Um, if we have a look at the base as well, which I do like, you've got that pillar of stone that's got a little bit of like magma coming out of it. I think that's quite iconic. I do like uh, the use of that kind of like sort of molten lava for, for sort of corn models. It kind of fits that demon world kind of um, vibe that I think these armies suit quite nicely. Uh, but again, really, really nicely executed Demon Prince um, and another great model to have as a character in a World Eaters force. So last, but by no means least, let's have a look. You've been waiting long enough and I've been teasing it for long enough. We have Angron, the mighty Primarch, the Red Angel himself uh, in this army. Uh, really glad that we got to paint Angron for this force as it's such a great miniature to have as part of your collection and uh, to have a Primarch in your army is, is a great thing. Obviously the World Eaters having him just makes the force even more savage. Um, what I do really like is just the use of the black in the middle of the wings. Uh, again, I think that high contrast color to the red flesh. Um, and Billy's done a great job of uh, varying the tone of the miniature across the model. So obviously with that uh, airbrush execution that's been done on the flesh, adding a subtle transition. It's best demonstrated on the actual tail of the model. So you can see it's more of a deep burgundy uh, around the back of the tail here towards the sort of club-like mace part. And then as it goes round and curls up to the body, we've got that lovely redder, sort of more crimson kind of color that's on there, which I just think works really nicely. And um, one of my favorite things about the miniature is actually the demon sword. Um, and one of the things that I do really like about it, as you can see here, is that it's got the, the sort of glowing kind of orangey fire part around those skulls in the center of the blade. And again, we've got a lovely subtle glow effect on there, which just uh, shows that sort of uh, chaotic energy running through that demon sword. Um, if we move the model around a bit more, uh, just the infamous chain axe that he wields, uh, you can see that all the details have been painted on there really sharply. Again, you've got that lovely white banding on the actual haft just to actually hold it. And that, that follows through the whole entire force, which I think is just a nice attention to detail. Um, regarding the, the sort of brass areas, we've got a nice subtlety of verdigris on various areas just to show the age of the armor and add a bit of interest and a different color and tone onto the surface. Uh, which is just really nice. All the pipe work and things, obviously, just from the like the rear, just on the shoulder pad here, and those leather straps here, just, just dangling from there, done in a black to match the rest of the leather work and sort of sashes and things that are across the force. It's really great to have that consistency across the whole entire miniature and also the army. And you can see that huge bit of stone that he's standing on, uh, painted with lots of variants of tone and highlight stages just to add interest onto it. And we've got the, uh, the vast swathe of skulls that are on the base, all been painted nicely and sharply uh, with the uh, highlight stages as well. Uh, so that is Angron, the angriest Primarch ever in existence, uh, painted to lead this force. And I do hope that you like him ever so much.
So here we have it, this awesome World Eaters army to rip and tear its way across the gaming table. Such a phenomenal army that we've loved working on for our clients. If you'd like your own army painted to the Warrior Workshop level here at Siege Studios, then do not hesitate in going to the description of this video where you can find a link to the Siege Studios website. All you need to do is complete a contact form on there and send that off to us for your quote for a project with us. A huge thank you from all the team here at Siege and myself for watching this showcase. I do hope you've liked it ever so much. Let the galaxy burn. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.